Thank you, Mary Claire, and I'd like to thank the World Congress of Families for inviting me to Madrid. Uh, last night, I was lifted into the sublime listening to the wonderful music of Greg and your uh, tremendous World Youth Day concert, and today we seem to have sunk into the depths again. I don't like this topic, um, but I have to talk to you about it. Every year, the UN's Commission on the Status of Women holds a meeting in New York during March on issues pertaining to women's equality and empowerment. During this session, Endeavour Forum organizes parallel events on pro-family issues. This year, our event was sponsored by the Vatican, and we showed the award-winning documentary, Nefarious, Merchant of Souls. I have a DVD over here, but unfortunately, it doesn't play on your system but uh, you can get it uh, on the internet. It depicts the horrific trade of sex trafficking. It was produced by Exodus Cry, an international anti-trafficking -traf organization which is committed to abolishing modern-day slavery through prayer, awareness, and assisting victims. Nefarious shows a woman being dragged to the breaking grounds where she is beaten, stripped, and sold to the highest bidder. After she is auctioned, she is taken to a location where she will be sold night after night. This is modern day slavery where victims are sold in sex markets in some of the world's most developing, developed countries. Lisa Thompson of the Salvation Army of the United States states that legal regimes of prostitution codify and normalize male demand for commercial sex as their guaranteed right, and because male demand for commercial sex is greater than the supply of women, sex trafficking exists to, in order to compel women's prostitution. Lisa says, the experience of sexually trafficked women are not work experience. Sex trafficking victims experience serial rape. Sexually trafficked women experience the same harms of prostitution, physical harm and brutality from sex traffickers and sex buyers, psychological harm and spiritual harm, as prostitutes were not trafficked into the industry. So if we're going to talk about sex trafficking, it is necessary to talk about the institution of prostitution, just as if it was necessary for us to discuss sugar and cotton plantations if we were combating the transatlantic trans slave trade of previous centuries. Unfortunately, some people attempt to decouple sex trafficking and prostitution, as if the women were trafficked for some other enterprise. Countries which legalize prostitution engage in a new imperialism, which instead of exploiting the developing world of its ores and minerals, exploits such countries' vulnerable women and children trafficking them into legal sex industries. For the US market, women are sex trafficked from Eastern Europe countries such as Ukraine and Belarus, in Australia from Thailand, and from India and Nepal, girls are trafficked to the Middle East. They are lured with false promises of jobs, such as maids or waitresses, but what awaits them is a life of sexual slavery. Sex trafficking is a breach of the UN Convention for the Suppression of the Traffic in Persons and of the Exploitation of the Prostitution of Others, approved by the General Assembly, Resolution 317-4 of the 2nd December 1949, which came into force on the 25th of July 1951. The preamble states, whereas prostitution and the accompanying evil of the traffic in persons for the purpose of prostitution are incompatible with the dignity and worth of the human person and endanger the welfare of the individual, the family, and the community, and so it goes on. Article 6 of the UN Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women states, states parties shall take all appropriate measures, including legislation, to suppress all forms of trafficking in women and exploitation of prostitution of women. Now, I've argued about this Article 6, which seems to be one of the few good articles in, in the CEDAW Convention with our own um, state uh, parliamentarians, 
And I've said you can't legalize brothels, you're in breach of Article 6 of CEDO, which Australia has ratified. And they say, oh no, what that article means is that um, uh, it's against the exploitation of prostitutes, but if we have legal brothels, they won't be exploited. So that's how they interpret this article. So I'd encourage the United States not to ratify CEDO, it won't help. Uh, Free for Life International, a non-profit organization based in Franklin, Tennessee, in partnership with the Peace Rehabilitation Center of Kathmandu, Nepal, has opened the first human trafficking border monitoring station on the Tibet border. This is designed to prevent the buying and selling of young Nepali girls into Tibet. Each year, an estimated 1,000 young Nepali women are trafficked out of the country to service the tourist industry in Tibet. Uh, I was born in India and I holidayed uh, several decades ago in that beautiful region. It's on the foothills of the Himalayas. And when I was there, there were just simple mule tracks going up into the mountains with the thinking bells, and it was just an idyllic scene. And now it's deteriorated into a route for sex traffickers. And it just makes, makes me feel ill to think about it. Uh, Cook Pictures of Burbank, California has won two Teddy Awards for the production of Stella's Voice, a documentary on the heartbreaking story of the set of sex trafficking ep epidemic in Moldova, Eastern Europe, and the work being done by Philip Cameron Ministries to protect and offer hope to the children caught in this tragedy. In an opinion article uh, entitled The Ugly American, Sex Trafficking and Our National Humiliation, Dr. Albert Lawler, president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, writes, the sexual revolution of the last several decades has transformed any public conversation about sex and sexuality. At one point in the sexual revolution, efforts were made to legalize, to legalize prostitution as a victimless crime, a term that anyone could recognize as an oxymoron. Most of these efforts went nowhere in the United States, and most of Europe, to, uh, uh, and for most of Europe, to progressive law enforcement officials often looked the other way and did little to curb the market for illicit sex. Influential forces in society began to notice the scale and magnitude of the market for sex. Law enforcement officials started to acknowledge the fact that women, along with underage girls and boys, were being trafficked through international networks of gangsters. By the end of the last decade, American officials were aware that sex trafficking was taking place uh, in, in cities large and small. Women along with boys and girls were being kidnapped in far parts of the world on, and in the streets of American cities <coughs> to be sold into what could only be considered as sexual slavery. Over time, the shadow of international sex trafficking became evident in criminal networks that span the globe. Women and girls answering advertisements for models, maids, and childminders found themselves sold into slavery and transported around the world. Wealthy Americans and Australians booked vacations to destinations where their sexual appetite of choice, including children, could be easily purchased. As recently as the 2012 Super Bowl, American officials were warned that several hundred underage sex workers might be brought into the host city these developments make the international sex trafficking networks impossible to deny. Dr. Muller goes on to deal with the recent U.S. Secret Service prostitution scandal in Cartagena, Colombia, and concludes, We must demand the enforcement of laws meant to protect human beings from being sold into sexual slavery and the vigorous prosecution of those who are engaged in sex trafficking. We must demand that any American involved in such activities be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law and that every effort be made to release women and young girls from sexual slavery. I don't mean to only criticize Americans. In Australia, our Labour government has only a minority of one in our Australian parliament. And one of the members of the Australian, the La one of the Labour members of the government is uh, possibly facing uh, some uh, criminal prosecution for using union funds for, uh, for engaging in prostitution. He's denying it, he says it wasn't him. But it's interesting how this is affecting the whole government. You know, our government may fall because of this particular uh, activity. Uh, meantime, the US Conference of Catholic Bishops um, filed an appeal in April against a recent federal court ruling 
that deemed its government contract to provide relief to trafficking victims to be unconstitutional. The reason given for the ruling, the contract with the federal government barred referrals, for, uh, abortion, uh, referrals of abortion and contraception services to traffic women. At stake, the bishops say, is a poorly reasoned and dangerous legal precedent that ultimately threatens dozens of Catholic organizations as well as other faith-based service providers that cooperate with government entities to provide various social services. In other words, the U.S. government is cutting funds to these uh, faith-based services if they won't provide referrals for abortion to the victims. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops said, neither the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, the federal statute authorizing government funds for relief services, nor the request for contract proposals requires providers, such as the USCCB, to facilitate abortion or contraception funding. Also, no trafficking victim ever complained for the lack of government funding for abortion, contraception, or sterilization during the five years that the USCCB received grant, according to the bishops. Laird Pilkington of Exodus Cry, which produced Nefarious, commended Sweden for landmark legislation which criminalizes the purchasing of prostitution and referred to a recent bill in Israel which would also criminalize demand. Australia got a dishonorable mention because we've legalized brothels. Um, a global congress against violence, human trafficking and forced labor is being held in Madrid from the 25th to the 30th of May, so in Washington as well, so you might be able to attend some of that for those of you who are interested in following this issue. In Houston, uh, Texas, <coughs> Free the Captives, a faith-based anti-human trafficking organization, aims to reduce the, the demand for sex by targeting the buyers, and Sweden also does this. It's the purchases of sex who need to be targeted, not the hapless victims. We're hoping to put our billboards that will show people who have been arrested and convicted for buying sex, the Julie Walters, founder to free the captives. The billion dollar trade in sex trafficking is fueled by the tacit acceptance of legal prostitution euphemistically defined by feminists and health workers as sex work. It is not work, it is sexual slavery, and we need to get our terminology correct to end the degrading exploitation of human beings. Thank you.